Welcome to Motorland Aragon. We're ready for round 13 of the MotoGP World Championship. Brad Binder, the hero of the Austrian Grand Prix. You have never seen anything like it. The South African is having a stellar second half of the season. Will he be able to guide his KTM onto the top step of the podium here at Motorland Aragon? Uh, this week was pretty much the same as usual. Um, I did a lot of cycling at home, you know, tried to chill a little bit as well, just to uh, make sure that I come into this weekend feeling fresh and ready to carry on. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. See you in a bit. So what you thinking, boys? Where are we going? Achilles was quite cool last time. Where's that one? It's a one where, you know where we took that K, what's that thing called? I think it'll be around two hours, eh? Then back. Cool. Let's go. Better. I find the cycling is so good because you can do like more hours of training at less intensity. So it's um, always good to really try and build your base, you know? Normally like the second half of the season, when we go to the away races, is where I start to run a lot because I don't have a bicycle, I'm always traveling. Then when it comes to do a, a second session in the afternoon and you're flat, you give such a shit effort that you're actually wasting your time. So today, uh, today we had a two hour cycle planned. So we ended up cycling from, uh, from town up to, I think it's called Arkeles here. Uh, there's a lot of climbing no matter where you go here in uh, Andorra. Um, I think well, today it's uh, the South African crew. Yeah, we pedaled with uh, Greg Minar, so um, we had the goat with us today. <laughs> I always try to mix things up a little bit. I always try to I have as much fun as possible with my training. Make sure the oil's mixed. <laughs> And it's so hard to actually see on these little trials bikes when, um, when the fuel is full because it's like you see it and it's over, you know. Another great thing to do here in Andorra, since I've, since I've been here, I've really, really enjoyed riding trials. So um, the good thing is you literally just go up into the hills here and uh, we end up having so much fun. I really enjoyed being here so far, purely because there's so many athletes around. And uh, every morning we're doing something different with different people. It's a great way to really prepare myself for the race weekends and uh, feel fresh when I arrive there on a Thursday. So from here on out, uh, the next stop is Aragon. I never really set myself a huge goal or, or have come into a weekend with some uh, strange expectations or I prefer to just really wake up in the morning and uh, take things as they come. Started racing properly more or less around eight, but um, before that I always used to do some small little races here and there. The whole way has been me and my dad. He was always there prepping all the bikes. We used to race in uh, every class we could. so. We used to go to the track with sometimes six bikes for my brother and I and we would be in three races each. So uh, I think my dad was definitely the busiest guy in the pits. Yeah, it was good though. We had a super cool childhood. Brad Binder this weekend, I think, has a very good chance to go well. It's going to be nice temperatures. He has a really good record here as well. Uh, he won his world championship uh, in Moto3 here in 2016. He was twice a winner. Uh, for Red Bull, KTM, the IHO squad in Moto2 as well. So he clearly loves the circuit. And so he's got a big chance of maybe finishing in the top five. Who knows, maybe even a podium. In Moto2, I won here twice. And uh, in Moto3, I wrapped up the World Championship here. So I have uh, very good memories here. It's a place that I'm really looking forward to riding at. And I'm super excited to get started tomorrow. Good 
think a little more larger. I there. need a space, a little bit of space in this one. The okay. left is not as bad as the right, but the right is just a little bit on the limit. Everything that we love about these guys racing in MotoGP, it married incredible bravery and incredible skill at the same time. It'd be great maybe if you try to like, tuck on the bike and move around so also this guy can see maybe for more action. Cool. Make that judgment in that split second he had. Uh, I think Brad himself will look at 2021 and think it's been a little bit mixed. I'm sure he'd like to have been more consistently in the front group. It was a tough start for KTM. We know that they found it difficult in the beginning of the championship. But I think once KTM from Mugello onwards made some clear progress with the bike, he's using the experience now of already being in his second year in the championship. So I think now we're going to see Brad fighting on a regular basis for the top six. It's been tougher than expected uh, this season for sure. Uh, you know, I expected to be a little bit stronger than I am at the moment. Maybe when we got to Qatar, we were a little bit slower than we expected. It's been tough, you know, I feel like we have done a good job catching up because we're definitely at a much better level uh, right now than we were at the beginning of the season. So that's, that's really important. My season's only really starting. Um, you know, I feel like I, I'm starting to ride better than I have been and I just want to try to keep this momentum going and try to finish the year off strong. I've been working with him since uh, 2016. Yeah, sure, he's an uh, aggressive rider. Okay, this is one way that could, could fit to him. But he has like two faces because uh, he is uh, super easy and really like a polite guy, you know. But then if you have to ride against him, oof, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to do that because he's quite aggressive uh, on the brakes. And yeah, he understands that uh, once you close the visor, there's no respect. So then this is, he is doing this really, really well. Pressure is something that I've always comes from me more than anything else. You know, there's always times where you feel that you need to perform. For me, I feel that every session of every day, and uh, that's, that's my life, that's what I want to do. I want to do the best at my job, I want to have a successful career, and I want to win races. We're underway in the Austrian Grand Prix, a lightning start from Jorge Martin on his Pramac Ducati Quattro. My initial goal was definitely to get a podium. That's, that's what I really wanted from at least one of the Austrian Grand Prix. No one wants to see the rain coming, you know. The rain flags are out again, can wow. you believe it? I don't have any experience in this either because in the lower categories they just red flag it and then they restart the race if, uh, say if it starts raining during the race. You have never seen anything like it. Oh, they're all coming Apart in! From Binder. Binder. Binder's gone for it! Binder is the only one that's going to stay out on circuit. These are all changing tyres. Some people will say it was completely crazy, but it was an inspired decision. I have to recognise that the first three seconds <laughs> that uh, everybody went, came in and he stayed on track, the first three seconds I wasn't sure. Where's Brad Binder? Here he is! He's going to do it! The checkered flag is out, ladies and gentlemen! Brad Binder wins in KTM's backyard on slicks! What a Grand Prix! In that moment, we did something different and that made us an advantage to us, no? It was one of the most spectacular races I think we've seen in a long time. In Austria, I think we'll be talked about for, for decades to come. When I saw everyone peel into the pits, I just decided, OK, it's uh, my time to try to go to the end. And if I can stay up, there's a good chance it might be close because I remember there were about four laps to go. I think uh, sometimes in the lab you need to, to take these uh, opportunities or take this risk because yeah, if you really want to success, you really need to, to go for it and, and sometimes you need to try something different than every, anybody else. Here it is. Hey. <laughs> I'm just talking some bullshit about you. What's new? <laughs> you want to say something? Well, yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> On one hand, you know, I'm really happy with the second half of the season so far. Uh, since the, since the mid-season break, I've had a fourth, a first and a sixth. And the sixth place we had in Silverstone was uh, not an easy race for us. And I felt I did a really good job and uh, had a solid finish. In general, things are looking up. 
and uh, yeah, the team's working well, everything seems to be going good, we just need to keep it going. I don't want to say to loudly, but I have some good uh, expectation because uh, in the end, this is a track that I like. But, okay, this is a different bike, different class. I want to uh, remember these good memories from the past. I, I prefer to think positively. Yeah, in general, we are happy with the season until now. Brett is sixth in the championship standing and Miguel eighth. So we have two riders in the top 10 in the moment. In these days, the competition is very, very high in MotoGP. So only the biggest talents achieve to go in this category. Yeah, I mean, Brett is a very talented rider. That's first and he is also willing to risk in races and he understands more and more the category and uh, what it needs to stay in the races in the top 10. The first thing that comes to mind when you think about Brad Binder as a rider is he is a Sunday man through and through. And he explains to us on a podcast actually earlier this year that he just has this ability to wake up on a Sunday or every day in fact and just think today is just a new day. Good afternoon then and welcome to MotoGP. Round 13, six races left, it's time to go qualifying. Q1 on the way. He personifies aggression on the track. When that visor goes down, he is a different animal for sure. Binder comes across the line and goes second. Three tenths off Zarco, 47-7. Looks like he's about to go P1. If there's one thing he's going to have to improve as well, it's qualifying. You know, if he can be high up the grid, we know he's going to be fighting for the podium. So I think he'll be happy with some parts of his season, but definitely room for improvement in others. His qualifying is always still a problem, but he, on a Sunday, there's nobody like him. He comes through the pack, he's brilliant to watch, he's a hard charger, and I think so far, certainly based on recent results, you can honestly say that he's having a very good year. The people are saying all the time, yeah, but we are the first one that know this, you know? We are trying to change a few things to improve this area of uh, our package. Everything now is so tight. Overtake is always complicated. And then on the first laps is where you see that the gap is increases most. I think his expectations can be fairly reasonable. Of course, we had a double header here last year. KTM, they've done a lot of testing here with Pedroza in the past as well. So they've got a lot of laps, a lot of data for essentially factory bikes. I've never felt that any victories or even a championship has changed anything. I mean, obviously, might get a few more people ask for a photo every now and then or something like that. But uh, other than that, you know, that's why we're here. It's our job. We want to all try and win. And when you do, you, you definitely go home a bit happier than when you don't. Welcome to Motorland Aragon. We're ready for round 13 of the MotoGP World Championship with six to go. We talk about the race. At the same time, this track has a, a few hotspots. They can pass many riders on the brakes. So it's a, it's a track where you can also pass people, you know, easy. Well, when you sit on the grid and, uh, you know, you put on your launch control and all of that stuff, and then you're just waiting for the lights to go out. It's probably my most blank time. <laughs> where you're so focused on what you're doing and what and the task at hand that uh, not much else, you don't notice much, to be fair. Being a, a commentator in MotoGP in those few moments, those few seconds before it's lights out and the race starts, it's an incredible adrenaline rush. You know, the riders talk about the buzz from us watching from the, from the commentary box, you know, just before you press that button, it's a, a real special feeling. It's a, a special vibe, a special atmosphere, because you, it's that sense of anticipation. You're not quite sure what's going to happen over the next 40 minutes. 23 laps of MotoGP action coming up here. The Tissot Grand Prix of Aragon. Lights out. We need to take always the advantage uh, and use the strength from our bike. 
that we know is uh, especially on, on the races is for us is quite easy to pass the people but if we want to be fast we need to find a way to be also fast on the fast corner back binders up to eight the head of polish spargro on the red bull ktn part of these two yeah the rest is the same Ron Quateraro's lost another place. Brad Binder's throwing him now. To be honest, I really wanted a lot more from today's race. I knew it was going to be difficult, but something told me that it would be, I'd still be able to at least fight for top five. And, um, I was in sixth place and on the last lap, I lost a position which I never like, and I finished seventh. Today was a bit of a a strategic race. We had to be clever not to destroy the rear tyre too early. Even though I really tried to nurse it the whole way through, the last three laps were really difficult for me. But I think pretty much everybody had the same issues at the end. But uh, you live and you learn and we try again next week. The goal is I want to be stronger. I want to be fighting for that podium every weekend. That's where I want to be. We need to sort, sort a few things out and uh, the potential is there.